What's up, YouTube? Today we're gonna talk about Naruto. We're gonna talk about Sasuke. We're gonna talk about League of Legends, Valorant. Catch me on Twitch. Yo, Dreister, what's up? Did you bring back some girl? You good now, a nigga breath won't be your hum. Now pass me a stick so I can spit game at this trick. Cause me and breath and tricks don't get. Nah, I'm just playing. Alright. What's up, Hidden Fam? It's your boy Tony. We back, <laughs> we're back at it again with another video. And I want to talk to you guys about, well, what does it take to run a showroom? How did I start? And whether or not it might be viable for you, yourself, that's obviously into fashion or the type of stuff that we're into because you're watching our content. So first and foremost, so first and foremost, I want to break down cost different type of expenses that you should keep in mind if you want to start your own retail business. And the numbers will vary, of course, depending on your budget, how big you're trying to do your own project so far and so forth. But I'll let you guys know how it fares for myself. Tony, yes. Okay, so first and foremost, cost. Depending where you live, square footage of a space will vary. But here in Costa Mesa, it can get a little bit expensive and we have a relatively smaller space to accommodate that. And here's something that we're doing here at Hidden to let you guys know, we're subleasing. So it might be a little bit cheaper and easier to get into a space if you're already subleasing off an existing tenant who has extra space they're not utilizing. Leverage that so that you can make the relationship work between you and who's already in a space to create a win-win situation for both parties. Uh, so the cost of the space should be something that you're really cognizant about. We pay a little bit south of $1,000 a month to be here in our Costa Mesa showroom. That's number one. Two, inventory. This too will vary depending on what, how much inventory you wanna accumulate and how much anticipated buyers you may have in your area or online. But it's really important to note that your inventory will probably be your biggest expense. That's something that's gonna be, well, that you need to build into your cost schedule so you know what to anticipate. That's number two. So you have your rent, the space itself, and then you have your inventory. Number three, staffing. Unless you're, trying, unless you're trying to do everything all by yourself, which I would encourage just at first, until you have, unless you already have a budget to have a team running to help operate all the different jobs that need to be fulfilled in your business, you want, you're going to want to consider how much you're gonna to need to accommodate for staffing. And that too will vary depending on how much people you have on your team and how much work needs to be done. At first, when I was starting Hidden, staffing was a little bit more, well, at first it was just me and friends, right? So then we didn't have too much staffing costs, but over time, we outsourced and brought on different people to do things such as product photography, our marketing editorials, fulfillment, all these different things. By the way, fulfillment, in case you're wondering, that refers to things such as shipping and handling, dealing with getting the product from A to B, the customer, right? And then you have marketing, the fourth expense. Marketing, that is attributed to how much money you allocate to doing your shoots, if you're outsourcing that, how much money you're spending on advertising campaigns through Meta. Highly recommend this if you guys are already having a business and you're doing ads, paid ads and pushes through Instagram so far and so forth. Do not boost your post through Instagram. Use Meta, because through Meta, you can do the same pushes on Instagram, but you can highly target it and make it much more suitable for your campaign needs. For instance, through Meta, you can choose, oh, I only want to maybe promote to people on Instagram, or you could choose, I want to promote on Instagram and Facebook, or you could do, I can only promote to people who are using mobile rather than a desktop because maybe in your situation, people are only looking at your website or funneling successfully and converting, aka purchasing 
through when they're looking through their phone. Like, that's data you'll accumulate over time as you run your business and you'll get a better idea of how to best navigate your web campaigns and paid pushes, so far, so forth. So, that's marketing. So the next cost you're gonna want to anticipate is, well, taxes. So, there are two main taxes to really look out for. So there's taxes that come out from you just selling your stuff, period. And then there's taxes associated with your states. So every time I do a transaction here at Hidden, whether it's online or in person, there's subject to states, county, city tax, and all of that. That you cannot write off. Meaning, if you collect that, Uncle Sam is gonna want that back from you. So keep that in mind. When you're making all these sales, you see all this money coming in. Keep a, keep a note of every single sales tax that, is, uh, that you've accumulated over a tax period that's usually a quarter and then make sure you're paying that back because you could get fined pretty heavily if you don't. And nextly, there's taxes that come just purely from income. That's your federal taxes. This is where you have some leeway as a business owner. You have all the write-offs in the world. So this is a good green flag if you're trying to meet it. If you're trying to figure out how to navigate the very convoluted and infinitely complicated American tax landscape, know that you have write-offs on your side. For instance, whenever you're taking your team out to lunch, whenever you're spending money for shipping, whenever you're doing just about anything, you can attribute that as a write-off to a point. So how I like to do it and how many businesses typically do it is we'll make X amount of income and then we will write off enough to just get your income back to zero. It's not like you're losing money, but in the, to the eyes of the IRS and on paper, you're technically balancing out. And that's not bad because then it's perfectly legal and you won't have to pay too much out of pocket yourself come time for tax season. Nextly, and the most important thing I want you guys to keep in mind is the cost of doing business, administrative stuff. So whether that's the transactional fees every time someone does a credit card purchase, whether it's the website fees when someone's buying from your website, or when it's just paying for the website service such as Shopify to host your brand itself. There's gonna be a ton of unexpected, maybe, or just extra variables that'll come to the expenses that you need to look out for. And, well, here's some red flags I want you guys to think about before starting your own business because at the end of the day, a nine to five is great in the sense that you have stability and you know what times you have to work. There's a lot more structure to your life. When you're running a business, when you're doing freelance, you're taking a bigger risk at a chance of a higher reward, right? But you're working essentially 24 hours a day. As a business owner, your mind theoretically is never off because even when you're not at the shop, when you're not working, so far, so forth, your mind is actively thinking, oh, what can I do to better my business? Bring in new customers, retain existing customers. What do I do to succeed, right? And that can be really taxing on the mind because there are a lot of things I have to even myself unlearn when I'm just trying to take a weekend off of myself, right? Not stressing too hard about things I can't control and reminding to be fair to myself because, you know, I'm just a human at the end of the day, but sometimes it could be a bit much. So keep that in mind and remember, 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 ask yourself before you pursue any project, do you love to do it or do you love the idea of doing it? Because those two are very different things, you know, because sometimes the idea of doing something is really dope, working at like a Fortune 500 company, whatever, it might seem really cool, but then you actually go into the real nitty gritty of it and you're actually in it and you might realize this isn't for me. And that's perfectly okay because not everything is for everyone. And if this doesn't work for you, you can always pivot and try something else. Don't fall into what 
is considered a sunken cost fallacy where it's like, oh, I've already put so much time, effort, money into project A, I can't just let it fail. That's, that's not the perspective I would look at it. I would look at it, hey, you know, we can still, you know, let's just cut our losses here and then pursue something else. We can always pivot. For instance, hidden, we used to be purely secondhand clothing but we've since pivoted to take more of a select shop slash boutique business model where we're taking accounts from different brands and being able to have fresh brand new products juxtaposed with our existing secondhand products, right? So it's slightly different, but then we've noticed that this works a bit better for us, so we're sticking with that. So there's a real-time example for you guys, right? And to tell you guys how I started with all this, in case you're wondering, well, how do I how do I start a business, right? Um, I worked I worked at an LA showroom called Horror Vacuo for a few years back prior to COVID, from 2016 to 2019. That's where I got my initial retail slash showroom experience. I got to see all the operations firsthand, how networking works. Uh, really, it's just genuinely meeting people and building relationships. So that's that that to me is networking. But anyways, besides that. COVID hit, I couldn't really go there anymore. I mean, I was stuck at home and it gave me the best opportunity in the world. A time to really just sit down, think and prepare for how I could try maybe a proof, a proof of concept for myself at a time where I had nothing but time. And the proof of concept seemed to do pretty well and fast forward a few years and we're here now, right? So, yeah, that's uh, kind of the rundown of the expenses you should consider when starting your own business and how to actually start. Quick crash course. We, For myself, I opened an LLC. You do that very easily by yourself do through um, the California State website. I believe it's sosbiz.org or something of that nature. Fill out your own forms, submit it. Super easy process. Cost literally nothing almost nothing. Next, you're gonna want to find a name. When you solidify the name and have ran with it for a little bit, make sure that one, it is trademarkable and two, you trademark it. Three, make sure either yourself or someone that you trust whose creative skills can meet your quality standard, create your brand deck for you. Create your logo, your typographies, colors, and run with that. Again. These things are subject to change, I imagine, when you're first starting. This is, that's how it was for us. But that's kind of like the quick rundown on how to start your own business, how to, the costs associated with running your own showroom. And lastly, especially if you're starting a secondhand slash archive store, make sure you have a good curation, meaning that at least all the products in your showroom are cohesive to some extent, right? Because the big thing I noticed when I was starting Hidden is that, well, it was really just my personal collection, which was a mishmash of everything from Japanese and European to all, you know, all these different vibes and aesthetics. And a lot of it clashed, which could lead to kind of a Buffalo Exchange feeling type of vibe, which you may or may not want for your own store. It works for you, sure. But if you want something more smaller and curated, it will infinitely do much better in my eyes. So that's that. It's been great talking to you guys. It's your boy Tony. Peace.